Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the uh, SEEK App Delivery Meeting. And my name is Lee, and I'm co-chair of the SEEK. And uh, very nice to meet you guys. And uh, just a reminder that the uh, whole meeting process will be recorded. So uh, please agree on that. <laughs> OK, so we do have some uh, several very important items in today's agenda. And first of all, uh, we'd like to know the uh, recent update from the uh, Air Gap Working Group, because I remember last time uh, the Air Gap Working Group talked about the uh, working partner. And uh, we also talk about that we need to approach to the community to get what's the uh, recent practices of the air gap delivery in the current ecosystem. So I'm not sure um, the, the team, the players from air gap working group is in the meeting. Yep, I'm here. Okay, cool. Perfect. Yeah, so I guess our update is we had one meeting so far, well, one official meeting after many, many doodles figuring it out. Um, and uh, we've just started a charter um, and a couple of documents that we're building that are linked in the agenda for this meeting that you can take a look at. Uh, the first two items we are targeting is uh, collecting um, our users, how they're currently installing Kubernetes in air-gapped environments. And we're going to collect those use cases and uh, develop a best practices document. Um, and we're doing the same thing for um, chain of custody. Uh, that's one of the biggest concerns that people have with air gapped is how do they consume upstream uh, artifacts and maintain chain of custody when they're in air gapped. Um, so we're starting another document for that uh, and collecting what people are doing and how they're doing it and hope to come up with best practices for that. So that's kind of the first two things we're focusing on. If either of those things interest you, um, you can either fill out the document or you can come to our next meeting, uh, which will be this Friday at um, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific. And that's kind of our update. Happy to answer any questions. You can contact with uh, CNCF to, you know, to, to, to allocate all these um, uh, documents. Yeah, at, at some point, I think we need a, a way where we can store them. Um, we could actually make a page on the GitHub repo where we store working draft documents if we wanted to. Yeah, I also agree. Did you just bought a new house? Uh, that's not my new house. I wish this was my house. This is actually a $25 million villa that I picked up. <laughs> the internet <laughs> that's so that's, this is you know to, to, right now everything is fake so that's the actual okay thing. <laughs> interesting okay but sure. i can also move from another room if this <laughs> uh, that's funny yeah so we can actually have working documents we, we don't put a lot on github i was just looking at the github repository there's nothing really there and we could make subfolders for the individual working groups so they can post all their documents there. So I think that would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, I, I can do that uh, to create the folders and everything, and then you can file a PR against it. For those who don't know where it is, it is actually here. But that's good because that was one of the comments in an earlier discussion that we don't have a lot of things online actually so this is our in case you didn't know we have a github repo where we can store stuff so we create one subgroup um i'll take this as an action item and yeah expect it within the next couple of days to be there mm -hmm. All right, so I think uh, we can uh, move to the next topic, which is about the operator working group. I'm not sure if the co-chair is here. Seems not. 
Yeah, uh, I can also give an update because I was part of right. the meeting the last time. So, yeah, we have two volunteers now who want to uh, chair uh, that uh, working group. Um, as mentioned in the doc as well, let me post the charter here for those of you who haven't seen it. Sorry, too many documents open right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so I can look, just give me a second. So the, the list is impressively long uh, of people who are there. So Garrett and Mark uh, volunteered to uh, chair the working group. Uh, we have already, a, you should have already received a meeting invite. I think it's every second Thursday uh, that we set up that meeting. Um, and the first work item for the working group will be to work on um, the operator definition that we started a while back and then dive into other topics. I think there's some additional comments that Matt posted in there that we should also address in the next meeting. And overall, we should uh, bring it up in the next uh, update to the TUC as well that this one's forming right now. Mm -hmm. So not, not a lot of work done yet, but there are scheduled meetings on the calendar. We have people who take uh, care of the work as it's going to be done. And first topic definition. Then further topic should really be also collecting the best practices. Um, it was one of the big discussions. There are lots of best practices out there already how to write and structure operators. And also helping um, some other people on um, developing operators in case they need support and then eventually moving into more of like an interoperability type of discussion. Um, and also related, obviously interacting with other projects. We already had this discussion between operators and um, air gap even. Mm -hmm. But there were some issues there and also with some other Kubernetes related working groups that um, there were certain requirements and that the working group can bring up these topics and we we'll also discuss and the flow should be the working group brings it up to the SIG, the SIG then can help to engage with, with the other projects. What we uh, deliberately removed as non-goals is that we're not going to obviously write our own SDKs for the building operators. There is already quite some out there. We don't want to create yet another one. Um, and per se, it's also not the goal to recommend new projects that the C that should be added to, to the CNCF for the time being. And also excluded everything that's non-Kubernetes related operator-wise. Yeah, so that's pretty much uh, the work that was done there. Okay. I think I, the most impressive thing is I think the list of people who are interested is longer than one single page. So I expect hopefully things to move forward rather quickly. On, on this work. Yeah, I saw Matt in the writing hat. Go ahead, Matt. I, I just wanted to, to note one thing. I think you said the meeting was on Thursdays. According to the CNCF calendar, and it's listed on there, it's on every other Wednesday. It can be as well. I might, I might be wrong. It is definitely okay. on the calendar, so I might be just wrong about that one. The first yeah, one it, was on Thursday, so I thought... The first one was on Wednesday, is what it says on uh, the calendar. Yeah, I missed yeah, the meeting. Right. Okay, you're right. Okay. Yes, the next one is, you're right, is next Wednesday. And it's yeah. uh, 6 p.m. GMT 1. Okay. And, and this and Wednesday. the air gap meet, yeah, this and the air gap meetings are on the CNCF calendar or the TOC. So if you go to the TOC GitHub repo and just in the readme, there's a calendar link there. If you go there, it has every meeting, including these working group meetings on there. If you're trying to find out when something is. All right, that's it.
Yeah, but yeah, thanks for pointing it out. But yeah, we have all of these scheduled and uh, let's wait for the next update in, in two weeks from now. Don't expect too much progress over the next two weeks, but let's see how far we can go. I, I also noticed that in the definition of operator and work, uh, we, we actually did not mention what's the difference between controller and operator. That was one of the big discussions when uh, the, the question came up, what's the difference between a control and an operator? Mm -hmm. And the other topic was, can something be an operator if it's not using a CRD? Okay. Despite the current definition, it does not. <laughs> but we had a discussion about Flux. Flux uses a Git repo. Um, so it's like, it was like a, would Flux count as an operator or doesn't it count as an operator? So, but I think that discussion will be interesting. What's a controller and what's a, what's a CRD? Okay, but that's pretty much, yeah, much the update. Yeah, I think the operator working group need to raise a wider discussion about these fundamental um, issues. We may want to collect some feedback from the community about, okay, uh, what is your impression of operator? Because I do talk with several guys from the community and uh, the feedback is more like the operator is for you to install a software instead of operate your software. And I think that is one of the common misunderstanding about the operator we are talking about today. Um, not to mention the day two and day three uh, operations. It's, it's still considered out of scope of the current operator implementations. Yeah, um, I, I think what we should do going forward here, once we have a first definition, we need to get back to the TUC anyways and ask the TUC for... Uh, yeah, that makes sense. I think they have a strong opinion on, on what they want to see in there. Right. Okay, so let's uh, finish this topic and go to the third one. It's a big discussion uh, actually about Harbor graduation uh, review. And uh, we, we talked, I actually talked with uh, TOC about this part and I think it's more like a collaboration review from multiple six from CNC. So I'm not sure if there are anyone from Vimeo to give us some more feedback. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, right, I'm right here, this is Michael. Um, I'm one of the maintainers of Harbor and um, I'm the one that added it to the agenda for today. Uh, essentially, Harbor has been, uh, has been up for graduation for the last six months with CNCF, and we had to go through uh, uh, a set of reviews by Seek Runtime, which gave us thumbs up. Uh, Seek Storage, which had one concern, but then that everything was good with, with Harbor. And then we're undergoing a review with Seek Security now. Um, uh, Quinton, had said that maybe SIG apps or SIG app delivery should also review Harbor. Uh, I personally didn't see um, a, a connection there, but you know, following with the CNCF guidelines, so I wanted to talk with you guys and see uh, what kind of review you can do or uh, with what context in mind, since we already had three other six review Harbor. Um, the ultimate goal here is for uh, your SIG to either give us a thumb up ups or thumbs down or something in between on, on, on our bid towards graduation with the focus of what you intend to review. Um, in, the, in the meeting notes, I added uh, a couple of items uh, like our PR that we have for graduation, um, the SIGAPS review ticket that uh, I believe it was Ricardo that created it. He's from SIG Runtime. Um, and then also the due diligence document, which is um, some if you if you want to review Harbor, this is basically how you get started, and it's a fairly comprehensive uh, document that talks about uh, the CNCF uh, graduation requirements and how Harbor meets them um, in each one of the different categories. So, what are the thoughts from this seek? And, and I know that Matt has gone through this process with Helm just very recently. So, uh, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that too. Uh, can I can I first jump in and just say something real quick? Uh, as somebody who's gone through the process of putting this together, it is incredibly laborious to collect all of this information and to write it all down and attempt to review it. So I want to give you props for doing that because it's just 
so much work um, to do it, especially for the benefits are, are, are pretty small. Uh, going, can you all hear me? Yeah, better. Yeah, you, you okay. were muted. No, no, I heard it. The benefits are pretty small going from incubation to graduation as far as you as a project have. And the amount of work you go through, I want to commend you for, for putting this time in. You did more than I did for Helm, uh, especially going between all these SIGs. So I just want to call out and give you props for, for having the energy and the stamina to go through this for so long and to do so much work and to write this up stuff up so clearly. Like your due diligence is what, 29, 30 pages? That's incredible. And so props to you for, for going through all of this. Uh, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, th thank you, Matt, appreciate it. Yeah, from, from our side, maybe what we can do is the sake, so I don't actually see any issues that we would be bringing up. What we can do if we have to share the due diligence document, we can also provide, at the, usually at the very end, we provide the, the recommendation section usually, uh, and just let, give us maybe uh, a bit of time to read it through, and then we can make the recommendation from our side as well too. Yeah, yeah I actually read through the documentation before, and I also met in person with with Henry from Vindir about this project. So uh, I, I do have several questions about Harbor. Uh, if you guys can provide information on the documentation, it's good. So it's first of all is, uh, I would like to see uh, what is the current artifacts in Harbor. For example, are there all dark images or there are some other kinds of OCI artifacts stored in Harbor? Uh, do you have this yeah. data? Yeah. Yeah, I can answer that. So, so today, Harbor, uh, our latest release is 1.10. It only supports Helm charts, uh, some charm museum, and then it also supports container images. Our release of Harbor 2.0 that ships this month, uh, actually about three weeks away from the release, is fully OCI compliant. So any OCI compliant file can be managed in Harbor. That means you can push it, you can pull it, uh, you can replicate it because Harbor has a very extensive replication engine. Um, you can enforce quota management, you can enforce retention policies, uh, you can enforce RBAC. So all the features of Harbor apply to full OCI compliance. And that's, uh, we actually have uh, we've been demoing that for the last few weeks. Uh, also, our scanning capabilities apply to OCI compliance. So, for example, if you have a Cena bundle, that's a thick bundle with four or five images in it, we can open it up and scan the individual images and give you a compliance report on them. Yeah, I think that is the most important thing for the CGAP delivery is caring about uh, because Harbor now can be used as a, um, a distribution uh, center of a software. Uh, as you mentioned, it can be any kind of OCI uh, compatible artifacts stored in Harbor, and you can distribute software from that kind of from that source. So I think it's important to add this part information in in the due diligence documentation. And uh, uh, I think the co-chairs of CCAP delivery will also pay attention to that part to see, okay, if Harbor is a good candidate, or is there anything to need to be improved regarding to uh, acting as a software distribution source like Docker Harbor, right? So I think that is one thing I, I, I want to, uh, you know, uh, to check out on the doc documentation. And the second thing is about the, uh, the, the scalability of Harbor. So I'm not very sure about how many, you know, nodes or how many, um, I don't know the matrix you, you guys use in, in the uh, Harbor. So I do, yeah, I do show the area scalability uh, part in the documentation. So. Have you ever considered about the scalability maybe has some, you know, metrics related to software distribution? Because today, I see, what I see is more about, okay, how many nodes, how many resources, metrics the, the, the Harbor is using. So have you ever considered about, you know, maybe you can add some part of the, the, the scalability from the application software or software, di software distribution perspective? Yeah, so, so, so we basically do scale testing uh, from a few different angles, right? So one of it is from the end user, uh, think the developer, uh, mm -hmm. how many concurrent push and pull operations we can do, how many images uh, we can manage, we can manage 100,000 images. And we actually have customers that have uh, terabytes and terabytes of storage on Harbor with you know thousands of images. And that works fairly well um, from a, if I understand your question 
correctly, you're also asking, you know, Harbor can be in a hub and spoke model, right? Where Harbor, you can have a single Harbor instance in the middle, um, which can enforce your policy around scanning and compliance. And then you can replicate those images all over the world uh, from the central location where you have uh, clusters on the edge. Just like folks want to put a Kubernetes cluster on the edge, you might have a Harbor instance on the edge. Or if you have uh, assets in a small, medium data center all over the world, you want to replicate them. So Central Harbor does all the computer on scanning and compliance, and then it, it populates the images to other Harbor instances or even other registries so that they can be utilized by developers. Um, mm -hmm. Harbor is horizontally scalable. Uh, our services are stateless, so we have absolutely no, uh, no problem scaling to this. And we have... Um, even though traditionally most of our customers only have two or three of these stamps that they replicate between, uh, we have tested with uh, combinations of many, uh, many replication, uh, let's call them replication workers that replicate images all over the world. Um, but typically customers only have two or three. So they have a couple of data centers, they use them for geo redundancy and they replicate their images across that. Uh, we haven't seen people start putting uh, Kubernetes clusters on the edge yet uh, at high volume where they also put Harbor on the edge. Okay. One, one yeah. thing I want to mention that since we're talking about the edge, our 2.1 release of Harbor, which we already started working on, now it will probably ship prior to Kubicon, uh, uh, if not much earlier, we're actually going to enable proxy caching capabilities in Harbor as well as P2P distribution. So uh, that's specifically targeting the edge scenarios. So if you are putting a Kubernetes cluster on the edge, whether that's a 5G, uh, that's with 5G, that's going to become more and more the norm, then we'll enable you to put Harbor there, will act as a hot proxy cache for the images that you care the most, and then it will push them in from the main data center. Mm -hmm. And then we can also use P2P like Dragonfly and Kraken to push the images there in a more efficient fashion. I, I see, I see. So yeah, I think my question about, I think you can, you know, um, do some more uh, calculation about to, to, to make the matrix more end user facing. So the developer will know, okay, I have maybe 1000 node cluster. I have 1 million applications to distribute. Then what kind of harbor architecture I need to use, what, what kind of, Oh, how many nodes for hardware I want to deploy? So it's more like an user facing metrics. I want, I hope to see it in the documentation. So this is, that is the second question. The third question is actually you, you mentioned, I, I also hope to see uh, how Harbor incorporated with the existing software distribution technologies like uh, Dragonfly, right? Like, uh, you know, Uber also has similar project which can, you know, bootstrap the image distribution. Um, uh, right now, I, I, found, I, I, I noticed that this part is missing from Harbor. So what, what is the current status of, of that integration? So, I, mean, I, I, just un I just answered that, right? So I said yeah. that 2.1 will have integration with both Kraken and Dragonfly. Uh, so that Kraken is from Uber, Dragonfly from Alibaba. And we will enable the P2P uh, distribution of those images. Um, a lot of that work is not dependent just on Harbor, right? It's also the communities from Dragonfly as well as Kraken to to enable that integration, mm -hmm. but we're we're already working on it. I think we have a, we have a couple of POCs already that that mm -hmm. show demos of that work, um, and then specifically for Dragonfly, we've shown that demo already, mm -hmm. and then um, the proxy cache capabilities. And I think Matt is raising his hand. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah. I so when when I hear some of this, um, what I'm I'm also wondering is is how much of this is part of the graduation review or kind of just a broader discussion, right? So I, I heard something that was a suggestion for docs to do better improvement on docs. And now every project can have better docs. Every single project out there. Is this something that should be filed as an issue or is it something that should be part of a graduation review? Um, that's kind of where I'm, I'm getting to, to this whole thing. Is it a mature enough project that it meets the graduation criteria or are these incremental suggestions for improvements, which every project is going to continue to have? And, and I, I just want to kind of keep that in mind. So a project that's under massive scrutiny, I mean, what, they're going through four SIGs for reviews and lots of opinions are coming around. How can we kind of keep the graduation criteria first and the other things we kind of note that their suggestions, I should go in issues, but they're not a graduation blocker for them. That's the only thing I wanted to bring up in mind because I thought like the doc suggestion is a fantastic suggestion to file as an issue over there, but it's not a graduation blocker kind of suggestion. 
that was my only my only thought I wanted to, to jump in with. All right, I'll be quiet again. Yeah, I don't see there's any graduation blocker we're talking about, but you need to give, give enough input on your documentation to let the seek to know, okay, what kind of what kind of functionality is your project related to the SIG? So it's better for it, it's better to have that kind of input so the SIG can do the in, to re, do the review. So it's kind of that kind of in, in discussion. But that also possible that this part of information can be a blocker for the graduation. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah, this is actually three questions I read through the documentation. I hope that you know uh, Harbor folks can add more information about this relationship with the software distribution, because I personally can see there is a relationship. That's why I think Qtone is recommended recommended that you guys may want to go to a partially seek app delivery. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and like I mentioned, you know, the Dragonfly and Kraken proxy cache they will be well documented when 2.1 chips. So uh, that, that that's a guarantee. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So yeah, maybe go ahead, uh, I think we're we have, we have fine on adding our statement to the review, uh, but also to Matt's point here, things might not be part of the review, but like kind of of the graduation review, but I think it's still an opportunity to get some feedback from the six, uh, which we can provide on, on, on certain topics. And in this case, they're well covered and the questions came up. So please also take it take it as input that, that might make sense uh, for some of these uh, the, the things and not just as a graduation blocker per se. So if we take the time to discuss topics, I think it makes sense for all of us to, um, to share feedback as well. Um, yeah, they, they give us time and we can have, like generally give us time and we can have that additional note down there, but I'm not sure where there's like massive blockers, but obviously the ACI compatibility was one mentioned uh, by Harry that obviously- So, so yeah, one of, one of the things I've seen work with other SIGs is assigning an owner from the SIG that's responsible for kind of shepherding the review and gathering feedback and providing it. Uh, without that person, usually I've seen that the process takes time, like couple of months sometimes. So is there someone from Seek Up Delivery that wants to, that doesn't have a conflict of interest? So for example, it cannot be Brian Lyles, uh, who's not here now today, but who can um, who can basically own this and say, I will shepherd the feedback, go through the review and give the recommendation? I think just uh, as I, me, as the contact person for Harbor Project, if you haven't, have not approached anyone before, if you have, then you can just continue your process. If you did not, you can just as I, me, as your uh, contact person for the Harbor Project review. And of course, you can get all the feedback from any user community, but I don't think that's related to the graduation process. Um, it's not up to me to assign them. If, if the seek up delivery, if you guys are okay with that, that's that's the the seek that decides that, not me. Yeah, we have a two thirds majority here on the chairs, so <laughs> I think we're good yeah. to go. Yes, uh, you can you can always ping me on the Slack, so I can be the contact person if there's or if you did not have anyone before. Yeah, S sounds good. Like I'll yeah. uh, I'll I'll have you. And are you thinking what kind of time frame? Just so I can also set the expectations on our end. Is it like a couple of weeks? Uh, I may have several other questions about the detail. About oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So maybe I think we can, uh, I think we hopefully can finish all of this work in one week. It should be quick. Thank you. I'll, I'll ping you on Slack and I'll be able to answer all your questions. Yeah, no problem. Question, um, are you going to be like doing the review in Google Docs or over in GitHub? Just want to be able to know where to track this. So, so sorry, where do you have the other a six review? Because for us, usually Google Docs work better for comments than uh, right. separate, but we can do both. So if Michael, if you have already done it on GitHub, we can also stick to GitHub. My document is a Google Doc, um, but ultimately what has been asked <clears throat> is that you put your feedback in a GitHub issue. That's the GitHub issue that's linked in the meeting notes as well. That's fine. I just want to know where to be able to track for progress. And if I, I need to go hunt through Google Docs, that's fine. If I need to go hunt through GitHub, that's also fine. But let me know. Thank you.
Okay, looking at the agenda. Who put artifact hub on this one? I did. This is Matt. So I wanted to talk about the Artifact Hub because it is now being proposed for Sandbox and the issue had it assigned to SIG app delivery. <laughs> That's a nice one. <laughs> yeah. Surprise. Uh, yeah, surprise. Um, so I'm, I'm happy yeah, to walk through and talk about it, uh, however you all want to proceed, but I did want to put that up there. It's fine. So I think yeah, we can start with uh, with the with the review document or artifact tab. I think there are some questions open around artifact tab. Um, what questions? We should get them documented on the um, pull request or the issue, so that way they can be answered for everybody. Yeah, I mean, my first question, honestly, about artifact tab is um, even even for sandbox who will be the long-term maintainer of this this is now cncf internal long-term maintained because there's no like like unlike other projects the cncf hub was created out of the cncf and put out to contractors mm -hmm. that, that used to work on it and what's the long-term maintenance strategy that would be the first one for me well, I, I guess the first thing is uh, we're going to work to try to engage more of a community around this. Uh, so it's not just long-term contractors, um, but we have not worked out all of those logistics on that yet. Um, and I don't know for a sandbox project if that's a requirement, uh, but that's one of the things that we're going to look to, to engage more folks who want to, but it may be a mix of contractors. It may be a mix of other people. I don't know. We've got the CNCF has contractors who work on lots of code bases for it. Um, more than I, I originally knew. That's kind of a, a Linux foundation thing. They do regularly have lots of contractors working on things, even over in like the uh, open containers initiative. Like I know somebody who's doing work over there. Uh, so we hope to have a mix long-term. Uh, right now, the project is just being heavily sprinted out by a couple of contractors and they are doing a wonderful job. But in the near future, we are planning on um, going into a wider release. We're not exactly sure when that is, more when it's not so pre-alpha, it's probably more alpha um, or beta, right? When you think of like a Google beta, it's rough around the edges, but it's ready to go. We'll go to a wider audience and we'll start looking for more, um, more basically web developers to come do that, which is a different sort of thing for the CNCF. So we probably won't be picking from the normal CNCF folks who do infrastructure things, but other people at those organizations and, and stuff like that to engage on it. It's my yeah. long-winded answer. Uh, so, I mean, obviously we can go deeper on the review. I think it would still be good to, if you go out there and could engage or recruit some people from CNCF member organizations that, that are willing to actively contribute especially given that some of the member organizations initially saw it more or less as a competing project to what they have put into the CNCF and they're working on. No, it's not necessarily a requirement, but still for Sandbox, it must be ensured that there's like long-term interest by somebody working on it. Yeah, so, and we're we are going to go out there and find people who are actively willing to contribute, especially given all the TUC-related discussions that were held around it. Just the recommendation to you guys to find somebody. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that is in the plan. Um, I'm meeting with the end user community later this week because we're not just going. So one of the big benefits here is for the end user community, for people to be able to discover this. And so we're actually, I've met with some of the end users and I've met with the end user community where I've got nothing but positive feedback um, on doing something like this. And so that's one of the areas where we will go look for folks um, to engage on it. Uh, right now, you know, it's, again, it's in its early stages. So we are doing this, but we're being slow about it, especially as we spike things out and make lots of changes, but it is in the, in the planning. So I, I'd be curious um, at this juncture who the we is that's working on this, because it seems to be a party of uh, uh, two or three people, um, the contractors and yourself. And so uh, you know, one of the requirements for sandbox or incubation or anything else like that is is that there are active participants and contributors to the project. So as we go through the review process, I think as Eloise is saying that it be 
good to have um, more committed people working on it than just yourself. Yeah, and, and those are not requirements for sandbox. For the sandbox level, having people from things like multiple organizations are not requirements. It's, it's one of those things. In fact, in the sandbox requirements, it actually talks about things that were commissioned by the CNCF to get going. Those are candidates for experimentation, which is what the sandbox is for. And that's why you can easily archive things out of the sandbox if they don't go well. And so given the current number of people in structure, uh, it, it does fit per the, the sandbox. And there's a separate sandbox doc that just goes through all these things. It does fit some of the criteria in there, which is something that I didn't notice at first. Other people pointed out to me. But still, I, I would like to see you know, more contributors to this project and more um, folks actually committing to work on it with you. Certainly, it's still not a requirement for sandbox, uh, according to the sandbox documentation. And, and that's one of those things, right? I know, um, I know people who've done uh, reviews around sandbox who've been asked to do things that were incubation level things. And so for this, I'm really focused on the criteria that is sandbox in this case. Um, and so, well, I, we, we are gonna go out and try to find more people. Uh, this does currently fit the sandbox requirements, which is what I'm focused on. Yeah, I would still recommend uh, what we also did for other sandbox projects, see how far along they are on, on incubation related criteria. You don't have to do it, I know. Um, but especially with a project like this and you know the, the background and like all the concerns around it, I think it would still be good to address these and just don't go by the books here, but we have obviously people here who are concerned about like how this whole thing came to life. And as you're obviously the one driving this forward, I see also you being responsible for handling concerns by people because as a community here, uh, we should listen to concerns from other people and try to help to, to overcome those concerns. So that would be my recommendation here. So as, as you're preparing for Sandbox to also address these, uh, these things. And All right. I mean, so noted. And there's like like a healthy flow of commits from different people. How you engage in the communities, how people can be on board. Like this is all a list of stuff that still also make uh, makes actually sense uh, sense for um, a sandbox project as well. And uh, yeah, definitely. And I think it's still also good to have maybe a bit more of a deep dive uh, presentation on um, opera. Uh, I wanted to say over here with help. That's not what I wanted to say. Steve, I'm, I'm still struggling with, um, with, with the naming here. A uh, bit more deeper presentation where you want to go, what you want to do like for the app delivery working group, just as a general information as it fits in here and where you want to go. That would just be my proposal. Doesn't need to be the next time, but I think it would still be good because like, a lot of people have open questions still and to give them an audience to ask these questions. So Matt, you can think of maybe you would, together with somebody else who's working on the project doing this, the next meeting or the meeting after. So uh, what kind of information are you looking for in it? The history, the purpose, that kind of information, how it's built, what it's doing, what, like what kinds how of related are you looking for? Other CNCF, pro yeah, these things, and how it's related to other CNCF projects um, and, and member projects, what your roadmap is, where you want to go. If you, if you say you have end users, like who's like using it right now would be interested maybe as, as part of that conversation as well. Okay. Now, no, the end user part is an incubation level requirement um, as far as those kinds of things go. So I'll, I'll drum up some things on that, but end users is an incubation requirement for those not familiar. It is. If you have it, I would still recommend it. You, you know the background of this, and you know the yeah. discussions around it. I, I do, and I and I know that this was started as an experiment that's in pre-alpha. That's not targeting lots of end users at the moment because it's attempting to get up and going before we shoot after lots of end users and fill out some of the rough edges. And so right now we haven't targeted a wide launch yet, and that's why it's it's very much an experiment at this point. And so. It's not trying to be an incubation project with lots of users and we will be getting there. And in our next meeting, we'll be talking about exactly that uh, to come up with the timetable. But at this point in time, we have not targeted a wide launch with lots of users because 
at that point, you've got to stop doing some things like breaking changes and things like that. It is very much an experiment in the terms of a sandbox experiment, which is one of the things the sandbox projects are for. And so that, that's why we're not going to have lots of end users. We're not targeting it. We're targeting the experiment phase. So I'll, I'll attempt to talk about that portion as much as I can, and we'll see how far we've progressed by the time I come to present on that. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Are there any other questions or comments on this? Yes. So what I'm hearing about, you are now targeting for large scale user, you mean for now or for long term? We, we do plan on going large scale. I mean, the Helm Hub goes out large scale right now. Mm -hmm. um, we've got, I can't remember how many organizations have put their things in. Um, and so large scale of users of people presenting things and large scale of people consuming things through it both as a hub, and it'll also be packaged up for, for people to take a look at, but the primary is the public hub at the moment. Um, and so when it goes to large scale, uh, the idea is to be able to serve people around the world in many geographies um, in that way. And so it's a little different than many of the projects that come through here, which are meant to be primarily self-hosted. This is a kind of a different style project. So, so if I understand cor correctly, so you're saying that you want to make the Artifact Hub as successful as Helm Hub. Oh, far more successful than the Helm far Hub. Okay. That's my goal. Far more successful than the Helm Hub. I got it. I got it. Yeah, that's because we're going to list things other than just charts in it. Uh, so I was at the OPA call earlier this week, and we were talking about how do they get their things listed, and. We talked, you know, it was just a back and forth. I presented what we're doing and talked to them about how they would want to proceed. And they very much want to have policies listed and discoverable. So it's going to be more than just things like charts and um, applications. We're actually looking at how do they do policies. And they've been talking about sharing policies mm -hmm. and they've got a couple of different ways. And so they're going to come back to us because we gave them options. We will do everything in the artifact of ourselves. You can come up with things you want. They're going to come back up to us with what they would like to do. And they're working through that now. And so you'll be able to discover, hopefully, policies in there once they work out what they, how they want to go about doing that. And you could have different organizations sharing their policies, um, even as starting points and things like that. And so that's one of the bits that we're doing. And so somebody who's not just looking for a Helm chart, somebody who's looking for an OPA policy will hopefully be able to go there, search for it, filter on it, and discover those. I think that that part also needs to be added in the goal or motivation for the project, which I think is missing from the current proposal. What is the goal of the, What is the goal of the project? Is currently missing from the the proposal. The proposal only says what is this hub is for. It did, not, it did not mention that the goal of the project is far. Okay. Uh, uh, well. It, in, in the um, pull request, the, the language I have right now says the goal of the artifact hub is easy discovery of cloud native artifacts. For example, Helm charts, Falco rules, etc., And to provide information about the artifacts so that end users can make decisions about using them. Yeah. Right. And so, so. Kind of different from what you mentioned. What different you mentioned from. From what you just mentioned. So what you just mentioned that the goal of the project is far popular than Helm Harp. Oh, I, I, I think that that's, that's kind of a personal thing. Uh, so from the Helm community, if the artifact hub takes off and is legitimate, we will be deprecating the Helm hub. We've already agreed to support that. If it is able to turn into a real supported thing um, with use, we will be deprecating the Helm hub and pointing people to the artifact hub as the place to do it. And we will work on things like, so the Helm client right now can search the Helm hub. You can use Helm search hub and then search for something. We will gladly do things like point you over to the artifact hub to search for charts. Um, so that way we don't have to do duplication. Our, yeah. our, our hope is this can take over. Information are missing from the proposal and I think they are important. Uh, sorry, so uh, I'll try to add more of that. Like the Helm comment is further on in the proposal that's in there. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll try to find and, and bubble some more of that up, but that is in, some of this is in the proposal. Right, and the second thing I found is missing is what you are looking for from CNCF, right? It's a common question. Why we want to move Artifact Hub to CNCF? That part is also missing from the current proposal. And, and you know what's interesting? Uh, now that you say that, I totally get it because I've told people this in the past and I was going based on the, the structure that I was pointed to 
in the, the templates and process documentation, which doesn't ask for that. I don't think uh, so I can do that. One of the, it should, I don't think it should be part of the template. It's just a question we are asking and we hope that you can add that part in the proposal. No, no, and, and, and I totally agree with that. But I, I think the interesting thing is in the process documentation, when I was walking through it, either I skipped over it or it's not there, which may be why projects aren't including it. Uh, it's not thought of in just the process that I need to write that down. No, that's a great question and I will write something up on it. Yeah, go ahead, just do that. Yeah, that is two questions I'm just raising my head now I'm looking at your proposal. Hey, this is Rob. I had a quick question. Um, I know that we had a call and uh, that Chris Nova organized and she brought some um, things over to the Falco community. And um, it seems like they're not in love with this idea and probably won't be participating. Um, I'm just curious what your, your thoughts were on their feedback and if you're gonna take any of that into consideration. So we got on, I got on a Falco call in their last meeting and it's one of the things that we talked about. And I think there was some confusion. So when the Falco community was talking about support and what they support, they end up talking about what do they actually contribute people and hours and time and support to. And they're stretched pretty thin right now. They're talking about scaling back some of their installations and some of their support because they're getting so many questions for things that are outside of Falco. So like they have a Falco Helm chart right now and they get questions about Helm over there instead of at the Helm project, which I, I, I totally relate to because in Helm, I get questions all the time on the Helm project about Kubernetes general things. And so right now they're actually said they're dealing with that problem. And so they don't want to put hours in and support it and do that kind of work in, in the shape it's in. And that was not something we were actually asking them for. And so we got on, uh, I asked for their thoughts and their feedback, how they'd want to go about doing it. And so one of the things we're doing is we, we are going to take their rules that they have listed and display them through there. And they've given their blessing to do this. Um, they just don't have the time and energy to put work into it. And they don't want to put an official seal of we support this, which means we're going to put man hours in or people hours into um, making sure all the things work because they're a bit overloaded. And, and I think some of that context was lost, but they are very happy to have things listed and searchable and found. Um, they've given feedback on how we should display things over on the Artifact Hub, feedback that's actually been rolled into the hub already since the meeting, which was last week, I think. Uh, and so we've already rolled out those changes to, to their requests. And so they've given positive feedback and haven't been so much against it as they're kind of in wait and see, um, but they're happy to have their things more discoverable. So Matt, that is really not the way that that uh, Falco call went. Um, and Wh which Falco call? I'm sorry. This are you talking about, Diane? The call that we had the day before the TOC call, or the normal standard Falco meeting call? Uh, the normal standard one, and I put okay. the link to the issue in the comments, and um, it doesn't look like there's any confusion, but and it did look like they did offer that they should be, um, if, if it is listed at all, that they should be unofficial and unsupported by the Falco community. Yeah, yeah, unsupported as in their, their definition of support is they are putting hours into making things work. Um, that, that's kind of their, their thing, it's not official. And, and we're not asking to be the official thing. In fact, uh, in their call, they talked about how they're reworking how you install artifacts. So one of the things they're going to do is they're going to stop supporting the Helm chart because that's turned into lots of problems. And they're also not going to have an operator or something else. They're moving to lower level way of doing it. And, and that is still to be determined. Um, and so, I mean, I, I'm not sure what else to say there. They don't want to support it, but their definition of support isn't to give it a thumbs up or thumbs down. Their definition of support was to put people hours and time into working on it which is one of the things I, they clarified for me. Yeah, so I, that totally makes sense. So who is gonna put the time in to like list those things? Is it your working group that's gonna do that? And then is that extended to other types of entities? Uh, as of right now, the um, Artifact Hub folks are going to do the best we can to list those and to scrape them to make them discoverable. And we point people back to the root source on that because we want them to be discoverable. And as they make changes, we will have to adapt. 
Okay, awesome. Yeah, I'd love to see that process written down just so that we have it so that the next folks that want to do the same thing uh, can reference it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and some, other, some other minor issues, even if you want to be pre-alpha and early stage, there is not a single release right now of Artifact Hub. I mean, you claim to be alpha, but there isn't even an alpha release right now. So this might also be something we want to look into. Yeah, and, and, and with this, this is one of the things that maybe I'll have a question on. So websites will often, and web apps will often work in a little bit different manner than um, something like shipped software. And so we are in pre-alpha, not alpha, which would be tagged releases at that point. Um, and, and I expect we'll, we'll tag it when we go to what we would consider alpha. But when you're deploying something like websites, like if you go to most of the project websites, you're not going to see things like um, tagged releases on their websites or their web apps that they run for their things. And so how does this work differently than the standard ship software MO in this case as we go through the different steps? And, and I don't know the right answer to it. It's one of those things that is slated for the, our calls. Um, but that's one of the things that we'll need to work out. Like when do we tag and say releases and then, because then you get into install instructions when our primary is a web app and, and how is that different here? Yeah, because when I look at the documentation on GitHub, it mentions that I should install my own version of the hub. Uh, I'll have to go take a look at that. That's probably yeah. for development purposes and on-prem, but our primary target at the moment is getting a working web app up. To, Cause the goal is to enable discovery of things on a large scale that are distributed. And we know people will also run it on-prem. Uh, the software that powers the Helm Hub started as on-prem software that was repurposed for the public and it's just had great success. Um, so we know there's both cases, but instead of the Helm Hub software, which started on-prem, this is starting more with a, a more of a public, which is actually letting us build out certain features like organization and user management and things like that, because those cases can be a little different when you're on-prem versus um, at least the on-prem scale that we had in the Helm Hub, so. Yeah. And I mean, one, one other point here is also as we, as we move forward on the, uh, the TUC moves forward on the due diligence of the operator framework and operator hub, how the two relate uh, with each other. That will be also part of the discussion. Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm actually waiting to see what happens with the operator framework and the operator hub as far as the TOC and vote goes. There have been a couple of different suggestions on the last TOC call and I have no idea where it stands since then. And so I've been kind of in a wait and see mode to address that until whatever happens falls out. And, and I'm just not privy and haven't read those conversations. Um, and I don't want to assume anything. Yeah, I mean, it might also be worse for you still to proactively reach out to these communities. I mean, I know it's not part of the sandbox requirements, but you know that this project has already some history and some very strong emotions to it. So I think it's in your very own interest too. Absolutely, to absolutely. And because the TOC has been working with the operator framework folks, at least I hope working because the TOC member took the goal of figuring this out and pushing it through. Um, since they, they took that on, I'm hoping they do it. And I really didn't want to step into that middle of that conversation until things were ironed out. And I saw the TOC moving forward with whatever they're going to do. Um, and I'm, I'm just trying to let them work out between the two of them instead of stand in. Diane may be able to give some update on that, but at the moment, I'm just trying to, to, to let them work out whatever has to happen there and then stick my nose in and start asking questions um, well, because I, I didn't want to interrupt. Katie from the TOC is on and she was doing the due diligence and then Brendan also was going to mm -hmm. look at it. So I don't, I don't know, Katie, if you're on and you can gleam some. So... I think Brendan is actually the, the TOC responsible for operator framework, but at the moment um, there is a strategy to, well, to kind of separate the um, operator hub from the operator framework. Um, and we'll try to push that forward. This is, I think they should be communicated last week towards the end and they should be updated already. We have, we've not received that. So um, we We'd love to get that officially from you guys. Um, as well, uh, Matt, you've been invited multiple times to join um, any of the operator framework um, SIG meetings. Um, so anytime you wanna come and reach out, we, we have regular cadence of meetings. Oh, it, it, yeah, certainly, certainly. And uh, I, I plan on it, um, especially around these topics. Uh, quite frankly, uh, my time has been my problem lately. 
um, with everything going on and, and kids home and, and just everything going on, my time has been one of those things that has been a little bit stretched the last several weeks. Uh, so I'm going to work out to figure out how to come over there and chat about it. Um, and, and hopefully um, sometime soon to kind of start figuring some of this out. As well, I will uh, actually follow up and make sure that the TOC come with a full update on this. Yeah, and also like really prepare like in the next calls like for a, an, a presentation, like some of those concerns, because if I would really like to, if I would really be playing the devil's advocate here, I would say you don't have software, you don't have CNCF member organizations, and the hub for all the endpoints you might integrate, you haven't talked to many of them, or some of them don't agree yet. If this project wasn't coming from the CNCF, we wouldn't even be talking about it. So just keep this in mind when you, by addressing these concerns. Um, I, I, I very much do. Hey, and, I, can, and I also know, can I, go ahead. Uh, I just want to pitch in from a medium size, small company. We're very familiar with Helm and we do all most of the things with Helm. Uh, and that I think that having one place that combine all the artifacts and be easy to search will really help us as a small and very limited resources company uh, to install more objects. So Falco is a great object or OPR is a great project, but come in and understand how to install it and how to find rules and how to find all the artifacts for every project itself is very hard and very time consuming. And the initiative of creating one place uh, that will help and possibly take questions from like the Falco community to this place will be great. Yeah, and I think nobody's debating that uh, centralizing and making things easier to discover for the end user <coughs> point of view makes sense. Uh, I just want to make sure that uh, this project gets treated like every other sandbox project out there and we're raising the same concerns and I'm not saying we're not taking it in there, it's more or less the question, is it mature enough and has it done enough of its homework or might it take a bit longer? But uh, I think Matt, you've got my points. We'll have another discussion where you can go into it, more details there and then take it from there. And maybe one of my asks of about sandbox projects is they are for experiments. They're not for mature software. Um, and the sandbox documentation talks quite a bit about the different reasons for sandbox projects as far as these kind of experimental things. And so just keep that in mind as we look at sandbox projects, that they're not expected to be like incubation projects. Um, they are expected to be a lot less mature and all of that. And, and there's a whole document that talks just about this that's been updated recently in the TOC repo. And so that's the only thing that I ask is when we look at this and any sandbox project that we keep it to the sandbox criteria for, for those things. Because sometimes I know incubation level criteria uh, start to creep in as far as expectation and asks that may just be premature for the projects. And that's okay under a sandbox level. All right, yeah, that's my two cents. Yeah, of course. But it's not made, it, it does not mean that, it, it means that you can be the experimental project. That does not mean that you, if it's the experimental project, it's okay because there is a lot of criteria over there to say, okay, it can be experimental, but it should add value to things like mission and it should be a foundation for a successful incubation level project. So I think that is the whole sentence of the Sandbox project. Yeah, from a, from a, you know, looking at it from a distance, because I don't have a, a horse in this race at all, is that I don't think, Matt, that the objections are around a maturity. My sense is that the objections are around... Um, Potentially. It are around some of the other elements, not maturity yeah. of the project itself, but, but are around, do we have, you know, do, have we thought about how this will come together, how it impacts some of these other projects and so on. So that, that's just my feeling on this. Right. It's not saying it's a, you know, experimental playground for the project. I think that may be some misunderstanding on that part. Uh, yes, absolutely. And I agree with those things. 
But like, for example, I, I know some of the sandbox projects have been asked to do things like the incubation work over time and start getting into the incubation due diligence to go for sandbox. And uh, in, in this case, I'm not even really asked, talking about this project, which isn't a requirement. And that's a lot of paperwork for somebody to end up doing to go for sandbox. Cause I know we, we quite often jump to those. So I know we're two minutes over, so I should probably shut up now. Thank you all for listening. And I'll have a, a hopefully a well-prepared presentation for you in um, either the next meeting or the one afterwards, uh, trying to address some of the feedback here. And I'm going to try and document it on the pull request as well. So it's documented for the future. If I miss something on there, which I'll be doing after this call, please feel free to jump in and add the points that I missed so I can attempt to address them. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Matt. And I think this puts us to the end of today's meeting, right, Lee? Okay, then thanks everybody. See all of you in two weeks from now, hopefully. And also keep in mind that next week, uh, we also have the operator working group meeting um, scheduled as well. Thanks everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye.